My Gavanan Melonin, and well met indeed. I'm Arakir Galadirthan, head of the modding team behind Divide and Conquer, and joining me today is Ankalame the Cat. She's sitting about five centimeters away from the microphone, just staring at me, boring her eyes into my cell. But of course, she won't visibly be here today, I'm afraid. But we are continuing on with Ered Lewin, and we're closing in on the last days of Ered Lewin's glorious campaign in the north. Captain Lofar and his two Beleriand Honor Guard must make the journey north. And then they will assist us in our capture, conquest, and reclamation, although it's not really reclamation, of Mount Graham. Our army, last time, successfully attacked the city of Gobadrine and was put through its paces, and we lost quite a few people, sadly. But we took the city and a much stronger army here, led by Dardin, which is actually a strong and elite army. With only three Ered Lewin units, very nice to see, is making for Ang Sul. Whilst the main force that has been sent to hit us, General Alvis here, you, Legend of Total War. <laughs> it looks a lot like Legend of Total War, but of course, in truth, it is Mac from uh, It's Always Sunny. But it just looks so much like Legend of Total War. But anyway, Alvis, with some snow trolls, has come back to try and hold us. So Gobadrine is going to hold there and deal with I that saw. force. Um, oh, no, I changed the merge button, didn't I? It's that one now. Nothing can merge because we've already merged. We've got a unit that we can give to them, so those 14 beast hunters will probably get killed off when Thorin gets close enough. Oh, she's had enough. She's jumped down. She's off. I am not keeping her entertained. Oin Saloon doesn't like me very much, but that's not a problem. What's the time? 10 to. Uh, Killy is making his way to the east as well, um, along with Belly, who is probably his brother, actually. Let's have a look. Killy, what do you look like? You're rather bald. <laughs> Looks like he's wearing a bald cap. Um, or he's an alien, either way. Ah, yes, Belly is indeed your brother-in-law. Ah, there we are. So, brothers through marriage. But anyway, let us end the turn. I've already pressed the space bar, so we can plow on. Time, this, of course, is the last Edward Lewin episode of this week. And the last recording I have to make this week whilst I'm still at work. And next week, I'm off for a week. Yay! Sing it from the hilltops. Which will be lovely. And the mystery video will come on Saturday. And then uh, I don't know who I'm going to do for Sunday for the faction law video. Um, and that's the plan at the moment. And then Edward, uh, not Edward, Dole Amroth will continue next week. Interesting. Alvis, deciding he can't take Gobadrine, has pushed past it to go and attack Captain Thorin. Um... <sighs> March Apparently down. that's a good use of their time, I, I'm not really sure. We might have to march out and hit him. This may be an episode of two glorious battles. The killing of Olvis and the capture and... Oh, 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 an invasion has been called... Oh, thank goodness for that. On Erebor. That's alright, we don't own Erebor. We're not interested in that. Now remember that the southern f area of this world is actually now completely in the hands of Isengard and Mordor, and the two of them together... Uh, the two of them together own much, much of the lands. So Mordor and Isengard hopefully might come to blows, which would be wonderful. Um, Angmar is indeed sending its forces back. We've got Captain Orleg with a large army. If Taug and Rold join together, they would have a large army as well. Risken, uh, Rishen and Roithrid. That's not a did, is it? That's a third sound. Roithrid. Um, they don't have very much at all, but they could supplement Alvis if they went over and joined him. But I think we can't just allow Alvis to walk past us and take Oin Saloon, which is exactly what he will do if given the opportunity. So instead, we will take the army out of here, leaving behind 14 of them. 37 of you aren't going to do very much. Your crossbows aren't all that useful when you're small in number. But I think that'll do it. Um, move you all over there. Take those with you as well. And attack. He thinks he can best us. <laughs> How misplaced is this man's... Courage? No, that's not really the word I want. He's going to die. Um, there are six snow trolls, which will be a pain. We'll try and drop those as early as we can with some careful fire from our siege crews. Uh, there's two, four... Mounted units. Alvis himself has witch knights, so not particularly worrisome. Now this time we want to try and ensure most of our dwarves have survived so that we can go and support Darden. Because um, for those of you that do remember when we toggled Fog of War a few episodes ago, Angmar is absolutely drowning in forces. They have easily five to six times the number of troops we have. But of course we massively outclass them and that's what we've got to rely on. 
And in order to rely on that, we must win battles like this overwhelmingly. Now, we did attack him, which means he does have the opportunity to pull away. Ah, we fought here before, but it just wasn't winter. Yes, we have. Um, I think he would most likely move to this hill here. It might be advantageous for us to try and move so that we can claim that little hill there. Yeah, I think that is going to be the best way. So, group all of you together. Don't be firing at will. Come and stand there. And then we can just move you over the hill and then defend around the hill. Because once we start shooting him with our ranged units, he will not like that. All right, give it a pause. And I'm sure you can get up to here in time. But what we're going to do, take the 60 and 60 of them. You guys go further forward. And then get the catapult to come in the middle there. And then 22 of you come on the right-hand side. Pikes, let's form a nice line around them. Most of the enemy army is over there, so a wall, let's go there, just on that ridge. So we'll create a little uh, horseshoe around our siege. Noob circle, as it's called, which is such a poor name because it isn't a circle, it's a horseshoe. Edward Lewin units, even though you're not very good, you have a large number of you, so you can take that. And then you guys go on the edge. The three generals, if I can be so bold, just put all three of you on the right-hand side. And then we've only got two ranged units, so you're not really going to do anything. But we'll try and get you to go around on the left. No, maybe you should go on the right as well, actually. Oh, she's back. She's taking herself to bed, it's all right. She's looking at me very sadly because she wants her dinner. All right, and you guys come on that left-hand side, and let's do it. Right, forward, 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 forward. And let's pause it. And let's bring down some snow trolls. Why is the caterpillar? Oh, you morons. All right, well, we're just going to have to see what happens when everyone gets into position because the catapult hasn't gone where we wanted it to. And the hill has actually worked really badly and it's all gone to hell in a handbasket. Um, get the catapult out. Get the catapult out. You guys, run forward. Right, so annoyingly, because the siege crews were in the group, which is always very frustrating... They've gone into odd positions and they can't really shoot anything, so... <sighs> Annoyingly, the one time we expect the enemy to actually do what they're supposed to, which is to stand still and let me attack them, they instantly rushed us. So our siege now is basically entirely null and void. We're not going to be able to get really any shots off with the siege crews. Um, we will win this because we just, we're just better than them. So, I mean, the victory is assured. But I'm really annoyed that our siege is going to get no shots because the enemy actually just rushed us. And we're just not going to be able to kill anything. You guys, what are you shooting at? Come on, run over here. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And down here, everyone down here is fighting something. Is our line already broken in the middle there? What's going on there? I don't really know. This battle has annoyed me. Annoyed me to my core. The bloody AI. Why can't you just do what you do all the time? Come on. Yeah, our siege, our siege might as just... You might as well not be here. There, there is just no purpose to you guys, unfortunately. Despite taking this wonderful hill, which would have helped immensely in truth, we now can't really do anything because... There's just nowhere for you to go. And you keep changing your positioning. Like, what is going on here, guys? What really is going on here? Catapult crew, can you give me a mortar shot and target those iron crown long -wing? You guys come down here. Right, we've won on the right-hand side. So the whole right-hand side is cutting across to the left, please. Thank you very much. Do as you're bloody told. Shoot them. What is the problem with these bloody catapults? Why the won't you do what you're bloody. told? They have lost half their men. Why won't you just do what you're told? Good tidings. The enemy general. Oh yeah, that's dead. that's brilliant. That is. Oh, sod it. Just pull the siege out for crying out loud. I don't know what the AI is doing down there. 
<laughs> Who bloody knows what this moronic AI is doing? I feel annoyed that I've lost more troops than I needed to because of the AI's stupidity. When in truth, that is just my own in in practice, is it not? But then, no, I wasn't stupid. I did exactly what should have happened. The AI should have sat back, waited, which has given us the opportunity to move our forces slightly further forward because we're the bloody attacking army. Then our siege would have been able to get involved and that would have been it. Job done. If we done. continue like this, we will smash the enemy. Right, siege, bugger off over there. It's just stop being rubbish. Ugh. Right, all of you come over here. Let's go. Who knows what's actually going on? If we remain true and steadfast, victory will be ours. The enemy seems to be routing. Killing our own men there, that's fantastic. They're routing. Oh, there's some Rudolph pikemen there. Come on, run up the hill. Siege crews are firing off, but they're not actually really. Oh, they're actually under attack losing quite badly. They've won down there. That pike unit seems to be the only thing left other than the archers. This battle has just been horrific from start to finish. And then look, they're not even paying a bloody attention. Oh dear. There we are, they're running away now. Shoot the archers over there. So we didn't actually lose too many in the end. Um, I don't know who's currently getting shot at, but... Look how our end it, just end it. Victory. See, we actually didn't lose too many at all. 350s is not that bad, to be honest. But if the AI had just stood on the other side of the hill and waited, like we, they should, like they were bloody well told to, Eridlu and Pikeman taking the top spot there, then it would have been fine. Very irritating. But victory nevertheless. And we can march forth and prepare for our attack on Ang Sul, where we will face a much greater army. I think the moral of the story is that, despite how boring it may be, for my own sanity, we should set up in every single battle as though we are going to have to defend it. Start far away from the enemy and position yourselves so that your siege crews will have plenty of time to get involved. Because the AI just seems to have an absolute roaring hard on for attacking the person who attacked them. Now, we'll probably lose Gobadrine, but I'm not bothered about that at all. Most of Angmar's forces will pull up now and hit Darin. Um, and Grinfan will get those four reinforcements, which sadly weakens his army a touch, but then he'll move out. Do we have siege in this army? No, we do not. Can you get out of Dunland's territory yet? No. We're so close. We're so close. Oh, more forces coming through. March. Garrison troops, always warranted. Oh, you still can't do anything in our favour. Right, let's end the turn. We Aye. shall be attacked Leaving by Angmar, I have no doubt. Splitting up the troops, sire. Leaving the army. All of the different towns training their troops, and the troops are telling us that they're off on their journeys. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I'm very disappointed about that siege. Very, very disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dunnan, don't go getting any ideas. Oh, bugger. War with Dunnan is going to be joined. Captain Orleg attacks us directly. He brings a very late game army, all Iron Crowns essentially, apart from a few Rudaurans. There's some Northguard. Yeah, solid army. Oh, look, they've even got Snow Orc Spears. Hunthor has a slightly weaker but still useful army if they can combine them together. Two archers, one mounted. So three archers, sorry, and one mounted. Not some archers to worry about. In this army, I am only one archer unit by the looks of it, but there is some siege. We have got cavalry of our own. Right, as expected. Now this battle is far more important. Victory here will break Angmar's um, initial counter. And obviously killing Alvis as well just before um, puts us in a really good position. But if Dunland are about to attack us, which they almost certainly are, then we're a little bit up against it then. But, so as we say, now this time we actually were attacked. 
Um, oh, and I did not pay attention at all to where the reinforcements were coming in from. They could be coming in from right behind us for all I know. But we're going to move our army here, and we're going to use this little hill behind me. The enemy are oh, bringing in reinforcements. So, we have got quite a bit of ranged, actually. That's pretty good. So, crossbows come a bit further forward. Stand on the top of that hill there. And archers. Dwarven archers. The finest that the stunted folk have to offer. Pikes, stand you ready. We've got units coming in on our left-hand side. To the left. And the rest of their force, though, comes down the middle. We're trying to get the crossbows in relatively... I think that probably is a bit too far. All right, pikes, go for that one instead. Headed Lewin pikes come across the middle. Then we've got some more longbeard phalanx to set up. Always nice. Longbeard phalanx is a fantastic unit. And then on the right-hand side, we'll take the sword and shield... You give us another bit of a line, and then we've got Gabilgothol, you can come and cover the right hand side. Then we've got our more aggressive units here. Uh, you're aggressive, you're aggressive. Um, well, we can then ungroup you actually. Come and stand at the back for now, and the generals come and stand on the right hand side, and the cavalry right at the back. Speed her up, and let's see what the enemy does. Now, which one had the siege? Is it the main army? Yes, it is at the back there. So, actually, General... Uh, cavalry, sorry, come over here. Did we move everyone? No, there's a Longbeard Swordman Battalion that's near moved. Come and cover that left-hand side. Right, the rest of you who are going to be on the fighting, let's actually move you around in anticipation of a really wide flanking strike. First forces of our enemies come... And they've left their siege open. <laughs> now we can count on the AI being stupid. And now it gladly, gladly uh, meets that anticipation. Iron Crown Longbowman. Rudar Landsman moving through them. Trying to move into position so that they can throw axes. But the Ballaster crew will not get a single shot off. As over the sun-drenched horizon, their death comes. The banner of Bree crests the hill as the merchant cavalry press down on their foe. A nice charge indeed. Now, of course, they wig out and they always go really hard for the people actually controlling the siege crew. Which was a bit annoying. All right, you guys. Let's go further up here. The battle is Nothing stands taller than the might of the dwarf. true and steadfast... Victory will be ours. The forces come on the left-hand side. You might as well actually form a line. I don't know why I thought putting you one behind would do anything. <laughs> Iron Crown Halberdiers coming in on our Edward Lewin Pikes. There's some shots still getting fired off by our ranged units. The enemy has been down, cut down to 10% of their fighting strength before battle is even joined. Now, the unit that they are not going to want to fight are these. Well, they're already shaken, morons. You're going to go for those. You're going to curl in and help with those. And you're going to cut through the middle there. Go, 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 go. The Grimborn, stand ready. Our enemy over here. Don't let them just shoot you, so charge back at them. Right, those have gone for those. You can move in and try and hit those landsmen. Let's move the generals further forward. We've got Northgard and Iron Crown Warriors in unison over here. Up against our Firebeard Warriors, Dragon Slayers. They're not going to do anything with the stupid Angmar. I do like Angmar though. I really do. They've got such a cool roster now. Oh dear, our pikemen are losing to their halberdiers. Quite, quite badly. Oh, and the cavalry, I forgot about you completely and you've been cut. You've been, you've been hit. Right, there we are. And then come back and hit them again. Oh, they've moved support in, Rudar Savages. You go for those Iron Crown Warriors and you try and go through on those Warriors. Oh, now that battle is joined, this one's actually going to be quite tough. An army of Iron Crown, it's just not what you want to be up against. 
Let's change those targets up and hit those Witch Knights. Our General doesn't have a special ability either, so we've got no extra reinforcements. But on the right-hand side, as expected, the Northguard are being trashed by the Dragon Slayers. Keep those axes ready. Fantastic looking units. Solid shields, sturdy helms, and fierce battle axes all. Blooded. They have lost half their men. And what do we have over here? Iron Crown Warriors, they're shaking as well. They're shaking as well. Now they don't actually have a general as I've mentioned, but if we can find their captain and put him down. Ah, oh, and there's their mercenary snow orcs from Gundabad. Bringing their own banner to the fray. Ah, oh, Gabilgothor Guard there, you've basically won. So let's move you off. And let's move you off. Let's go, 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 go. What's happening over here? No, don't chase units down. Just stop and shoot stuff. What is that there? Oh, a huge battalion of Iron Crown Halberd is. Right, Manoeuvre to get those. You cut in on the Halberd is. Yep, 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 yep. And as we say over here, it's uh, looking like going to be a solid victory. The problem, of course, is just here where our line is breaking. But then I've seen a lot of videos recently talking about um, how l battle lines are a problem in later Total War games. Um, and in some games it's not wholly, it doesn't wholly break the game. Um, but in other games it, it, there's just almost no such thing as a battle line. Um, and the battles just descend into absolute carnage. It made me think of Medieval 2 because the, something that this one does relatively well is the solid battle line. Like almost in a straight line from there to there. Our forces fight while our archers cover on the hill behind. Um, and oh, the witch knights moved off onto the cavalry. All oh, right. This one's obviously proving harder because we're up against an actual foe this time. We're only 120 turns in, uh, and <laughs> it's only taken rather 120 turns for Angmar to actually become a monstrous foe. But this is a good example of how the barracks event removal does just does not mean that you get swamped with elites in the early game. Like this is the first really dedicated elite army that we've actually seen. And by dedicated elites, I mean this is the first army that is more than 50% mid to late game units. Um, and as I say, we're like 120 turns in. That's a long time. But to the people that comment on the video and say oh, the removal of the barracks, barracks event has clearly made X faction stronger or Y faction stronger. Remember, this is a single playthrough. This game is massively affected by uh, random events and even just every single game plays differently. It always does make me chuckle a little when people will just declare your removal of the barracks event has quite clearly swung the balance in favour of Mordor, for example, just because in the one campaign I have played, Mordor has won. Whereas, in truth, in our testing, in the early stages of the removal of the barracks event, it actually hugely favoured Gondor, and Mordor had to be, um, Gondor had to be sort of toned down in order to the ensure that there was a threat in the blooded. south. They have lost half their men. Um, so it's just funny that this time around it's gone completely the other way. But I mean, it's a, it's a, it's an average, isn't it? So when I'm saying it hugely favoured Gondor, that's because in, in the majority of plays from our beta testers, Gondor were winning. But um, that doesn't mean they were winning in all of them. So it's only when we get trends that we actually need to counter it. We need to do something about it. Um, and we didn't really have any... We had a few trends. Gundabad became insanely powerful when the barracks event was cut. And so that obviously had to be rectified. But... Um, there weren't there weren't too many um, big problems like that to be honest. Oh, our merchant cavalry decided they don't want to charge, but they did still take a few down with charge bonuses. Guardians at the ready. We have lost half our men. We have lost half our men. That is true, but the enemy is is so close to being completely defeated. Oh look, and there's the there's Hunthor himself. I should have thought he's up against dragon slayers. He's not going to enjoy that. Um, but let's not just go hunting ranged units though. So let's make sure that our units are all actually doing something worthwhile. You're hitting those longbowmen over here. We can go up to time six now. This is basically over. Once Hunthor dies, these forces will fight on longer than they should because they've got the general. 
Good See, that's the problem. The no. enemy general lies dead. We don't want to just be running them down for them a day. So it is just those guys the over there that we are now fighting. The enemy yes, let's end it. 634, 2,800. 2,900 in truth. That's a fantastic spread. Lots of plus 100s on the kills there. 239 Grimborn Reavers. 254 Longbeard Phalanx. And 233 Dragon Slayers making their mark. Our general's only killing 47 and 46. That's very low, isn't it? In fact, the lowest. But then we didn't get them in till the end of the day. And they have a lot less men than the other battalions, so they're likely to get less kills. But that will be a big crushing blow to Agmar. I think their forces really will be down and out. Um, but it matters little. We press on. We need Khandum and we need Mount Graham. Um, and that is where the campaign will then conclude. And we'll play as someone else. Um, I don't really know who, because at the minute it's seeming very much like Dol Amroth and um, Eddard Lewin will end at about the same sorts of time. Because, of course, Dol Amroth is only going to continue until the point that at the Anduin is ready. So it's likely you'll only get a week's more of Dol Amroth, and so we'll kill as much of Mordor as we can in that time. And then the Anduin will likely take over thereafter. Ah, Beleriand on a guard at our capital. Fantastic. Aye. Aye, Lord. Aye. Aye, Lord. Lord. We march no far. Move out, my king. They're moving off. Honor, They're moving off. We'll rest here for Aye, Lord. You're going with them. Aye. Right, so Angsul has fallen. And we wiped out absolutely everybody within it. Um, we can build a brewery, but I mean, it won't, it won't do anything. We don't need it. Aye, noble son. The army at Gobadrian does need supporting. So Grindfarn the Unstoppable will move in just next door. Oh, bugger no, shouldn't have done that. Right, attack them. Come back. There we are, perfect. And then you can take those. These forces coming up. And... You're coming through. It really does have the feel that the Dunlendings are gearing up for war with us. Primarily, of course, because of Captain Caradoc coming up there on Basra Dum, which if he wants it, he's definitely going to get it. But also, you'll note Dunlendings moving towards Osgelon. It's just not good. Dunland, what have I ever done to you? Dunland are at war with the Northern Dunedine, as am I. Ah, oh, but they're allied to Angmar. Yeah, we're definitely going to be attacked by Dunland. That is definitely going to happen. Buzzardum built some roads, so we've got faster movement through... Oh no, Buzzardum's roads is down here. <laughs> so that doesn't help us in any way. But they've built the roads, and that's good to see. The army at Angsul, we might as well just go straight on. Um, let's destroy anything that's useless to us. Particularly because we don't want Angmar to use it again. And use the apothecary there. But yeah, look, I want every single one of you, bar, well, 13 of them aren't going to do much, neither 18 of them. I don't really care that we're setting ourselves up to be captured by Angmar again. We have a much, much bigger prize. We are but a turn away. Similarly, Grinfan. Oh, Grinfan can help support in Angsul, actually, whilst Darin moves on Khandum. And the reinforcements are coming up. So I did. I think it's probably a few minutes shy of 30, but that is going to be where I conclude it because I think much will kick off in the next episode and we may well indeed be capturing Khandum. But that, of course, is over a week's time until you see that one. And remember that the as of this week, um, this will be the last week where there were three DAC videos in a week. It will go down to two DAC videos in a week. So one week you'll have two Dol Amroth, the next you'll have two Eddard Lewin, etc. I do hope you've enjoyed today's episode. I do hope you're looking forward to the mystery video on Saturday. I'm looking forward to um, doing it. I haven't recorded it yet, but I am looking forward to it, I have to say. And until we speak again, dear friends, thank you very much for to each and every one of you. And Navarna den Peramad Melunin. And farewell.